My daughter woke me up around 11.50 last night. My wife and I had picked her up from her friend Sally's birthday party, brought her home, and put her to bed. My wife went into the bedroom to read while I fell asleep watching the Braves game. Daddy, she whispered, tugging my shirt sleeve, guess how old I'll be next month. I don't know, beautiful, I said as I slipped on my glasses. How old? She smiled and held up four fingers. It is 7.30 now. My wife and I have been up with her for almost eight hours. She still refuses to tell us where she got them. There was no pearly gate. The only reason I knew I was in the cave was because I had just passed the entrance. The rock wall rose behind me with no ceiling in sight. I knew this was it. This was the region talked about that men feared. I had just entered the gates to hell. I felt the presence of the cave as it was a living, breathing creature. The stench of rotten flesh overwhelmed me. There was a voice. It came from inside and all around. Welcome. Who are you? I asked, trying to keep my composure. You know, the thing said. I did know. You're the devil, I stuttered, quickly losing my composure. Why me? I took as far as I could. The silence took over the space as my words dried out. It seemed like an hour went by before the response came. What did you expect? The voice was prenating, but patient. I don't know. I never believed any of this. I uttered, is that why I'm here? Silence. I continued. They say the greatest trick you ever pulled was convincing the world you didn't exist. No. The greatest trick I ever pulled was convincing the world there is an alternative. There is no God? I shivered. The cave trembled at the words. I am God. You hear your mom calling you into the kitchen. As you head down the stairs, you hear a whisper from the closet saying, Don't go down there, honey. I heard it too. My wife was shaking me quietly. I looked around the cabin. The girls must have gone to bed. The fire had burned down to embers. My glass of scotch was still in my hand. Something is trapped on the porch. Then I heard it too. I grabbed my axe and lit my lantern. I opened the door expecting a raccoon or a skunk, but instead found a boy of about 10 years old. He stared at me petrified for a moment, then bolted down the path towards the woods. I gave chase. He was losing me, but I heard him tremble to the ground. I leapt on top of him in rage. Why were you knocking on my porch? I screamed. My uncle told me to, he stammered. I was no longer angry, but confused. But why? I asked get you out of your cabin.
When my sister Bestie and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old-fashioned farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard, but our favorite thing was the ghost. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some morning, Bestie and I would wake up and on each of our nightstands we find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. Among the house's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied, watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch that chair forward across the room towards us. Sometimes she managed to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them a cup of poison milk before bed, then she hanged herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse living room with a woman's body hanging from a beam. Beneath her, knocked over, was an old wooden chair placed exactly in the middle of the room.